Imagine two of history's greatest warrior cultures clashing in an epic showdown. On one side, the disciplined and honorable samurai of Japan wielding razor-sharp katana and steeped in a strict code of honor. On the other, the unstoppable Mongol hordes, swift and fierce, who once ruled over the largest empire the world had ever seen. Who would triumph when these two legendary forces met on the battlefield? This is not just a fictional scenario, but a real historical event. The Mongol invasions of Japan in the late 13th century brought these two mighty warrior cultures face to face. How did the samurai, defenders of Japan, hold back the tide of Mongol conquest? Let's dive into this dramatic chapter of history, where skill, courage, and even the forces of nature played a decisive role. Samurai warfare was personal, built on the ideal of individual combat, where duels were fought for honor. But with the Mongols on the horizon, the samurai would soon face an enemy that didn't play by the same rules. Could their deeply ingrained code of honor withstand the Mongols' brutal and unconventional tactics? The Mongols were a nomadic force from the vast steppes of Central Asia, led by the formidable Genghis Khan and later his grandson, Kublai Khan. Under their leadership, the Mongols built the largest contiguous empire in history, using their unparalleled mobility, disciplined cavalry, and psychological warfare. Their warriors were skilled horse archers, capable of hitting targets with deadly accuracy while riding at full speed. The Mongols were not just soldiers, they were conquerors, and they now had their sights set on Japan. In 1274, Kublai Khan sent an ultimatum to Japan, surrender and become a vassal of the Mongol Empire, or face invasion. The Japanese, led by the samurai, refused. In response, Kublai Khan launched the first Mongol invasion with a fleet of 900 ships carrying 40,000 Mongol, Chinese, and Korean soldiers. They landed on the shores of Kyushu, Japan's southernmost island, ready to conquer. The samurai, unused to fighting in large-scale battles against foreign invaders, were immediately at a disadvantage. The Mongols' coordinated attacks, use of explosive devices, and massed archery overwhelmed the Japanese forces but the samurai fought fiercely to defend their homeland. With no decisive victory, the Mongols eventually withdrew, but the stage was set for a second, more devastating invasion. The Mongol and samurai fighting styles couldn't have been more different. The samurai sought honor through individual duels, focusing on hand-to-hand -hand combat where their mastery of the katana and spear could shine. They fought for personal glory, with each battle being a test of their skill and bravery. The Mongols, however, fought in a much more strategic and detached manner. They relied on overwhelming their enemies with numbers, arrows, and a combination of cavalry and infantry. Using hit-and-run tactics, the Mongols preferred to strike from a distance before closing in for the kill. The samurai were unprepared for this form of warfare, where their traditional methods were often rendered ineffective by the Mongols' speed and unpredictability. In 1281, Kublai Khan returned with an even larger force, this time consisting of more than 4,000 ships and 140,000 soldiers, one of the largest invasion forces in history. The Mongols were determined to conquer Japan once and for all. The samurai, however, were ready and waiting, having fortified their defenses and learned from their previous encounters with the Mongols. But just as the Mongols seemed poised to break through Japan's defenses, a massive typhoon struck. Known as the Kamikaze, or Divine Wind, this fierce storm devastated the Mongol fleet, sinking thousands of ships and drowning tens of thousands of soldiers. The Japanese saw this as a sign that the gods favored their cause and the Mongols never returned to Japan again. The samurai and Mongols had very different tools of war. Samurai armor, called Oyoroi, was designed for mobility and protection in personal combat. It was a work of art, built from lacquered plates and adorned with symbols of their clan. Their primary weapon, the katana, was perfect for close quarters combat, cutting through enemies with precision. The Mongols, on the other hand, relied on lighter armor, which allowed them to move quickly across the battlefield. 
Their greatest weapon was the composite bow, which had a range far greater than the samurai's traditional longbow. This allowed them to rain arrows on their enemies from a distance before engaging with their curved sabers. When it came to long-range warfare, the Mongols had the technological upper hand. One of the Mongols' most powerful weapons was fear. Stories of their cruelty spread ahead of their invasions. Towns that resisted were often wiped off the map, with survivors left to spread tales of Mongol brutality. This psychological warfare was designed to break the enemy's morale before the battle even began. But the samurai were not easily intimidated. Their sense of honor and loyalty to their lord drove them to fight with courage, even in the face of overwhelming odds. For the samurai, surrender was not an option. Death in battle was preferable to living in disgrace. This unwavering commitment made them formidable opponents, even when outnumbered. Though the Mongols never successfully conquered Japan, their invasion left a lasting impact on the island nation. The Japanese, having tasted the shock of foreign invasion, began to refine their defenses and military strategies, transforming their fortifications and coastal defenses to guard against future threats. The samurai, inspired by the tenacity they displayed against a seemingly invincible enemy, emerged with a renewed sense of unity and purpose. This encounter, though fleeting, left a mark on the samurai code, deepening their dedication to protecting Japan and preserving its independence. The story of the Mongol invasions of Japan also became a legend, shaping the identity of both warrior cultures. For the Japanese, the divine wind or kamikaze became a powerful symbol of resilience and divine protection that would echo through history. For the Mongols, the failed invasion served as a rare moment of humility for an empire accustomed to victory.